Do you miss me? They miss me. They miss me. I know. They look at their bad ratings and they're saying, we miss this guy. I said it was going to happen. I was waiting for them to endorse me, actually. I know that was a big step, but they're going down the tubes. Their numbers are very bad. And CNN's remaining three viewers are saying, yeah, he's got a point. <laughs> You know, it's another glorious Monday in this horribly racist country. I mean, really, what a racist country. I'd ask Kat how racist it is, but it's not like she's paying any attention. Not after what happened this weekend. <laughs> not how you open a locker. <laughs> So I bet you're wondering, Greg, how racist is this country? Well, it's so racist that even its buildings are bigoted. Did you know that the rotunda, which houses the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, is guilty of structural racism? Yep, the National Archives Task Force on Racism claims the structure itself portrays our founding fathers and other evil white people as too positive. Shocking that the National Archives Task Force on Racism found evidence of racism. <laughs> I mean, I thought they'd say, hey, looks good. <laughs> and then spend the rest of the day eating Funyuns in bed, which, as you know, are also racist. Side note, I always thought Rotunda was Spanish for fat lady. <laughs> According to the New York Post, the report claims this structural racism deeply impacts how employees and customers interact as well as with the historical records. They're finding structural racism in the actual structures. The Rotunda's bigotry, quote, lauds wealthy white men in the nation's founding while marginalizing black, indigenous, and other people of color and women. But I wonder how can they say this without even knowing which founding fathers identify as gender nonconforming? Remember, these chaps were wearing wigs way more than RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> they were a healthy pack of pervs. <laughs> also, using their criteria, couldn't you say this about a lot of other buildings? I mean, how did the White House skate by on this? And how long before we change that name? But you see, the rotunda holds all the major documents all written by dead white men. And if all you see is skin color and gender, then it's got to piss you off. You get to the rotunda and you find out there are no female Apaches who wrote the, de the Declaration of Independence. That sucks. But what do you expect? Going to the rotunda and expecting people of color to be credited for the Bill of Rights is like me going to a hockey game searching for an Ashkenazi zoo Jew or zoo. <laughs> it's like me going to the WNBA in search of a wife. <laughs> <laughs> They're twice my height. It's not going to work out. Yeah. Or it's like you going to CNN looking for an honest journalist. The, the task force suggests tips, however, to reimagine the rotunda, including staging dance or performance art in the space that invites dialogue about the ways that the United States has mythologized the founding era. So first, let's address the idea that adding performance art to anything makes it better. That's like adding milk duds to a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> And that suggestion is pretty insulting to people of color to assume that they can only contribute the crappiest of art, <laughs> which is performance art. <laughs> when white liberals have no solutions, which is always, they always turn to performance art, which is really just improvisational back spasms. Some mindless emo pretending they slipped a disc. That's, I just, I'm a performance artist. Now, about this mythologizing of the founding, this is coming from people who spend every waking hour reimagining stuff. They say the founding is not just exclusionary, it's a myth, a fantasy, something that never existed, like Bigfoot or Brian Stelter's gym membership. <laughs> because anything positive about America has to be reimagined is horrible. Like you're suddenly awakening from a dream and it's really a nightmare, which happens every time I mix NyQuil with skunkweed. A trick Cavuto taught me. <laughs> now, you could rewrite history and come up with a new Declaration of Independence, add some new signatures, a black guy, an Indian, a New Zealand weightlifter. 
Because now every event has to look like a community college brochure, even if it's not true. I wonder what the angry white male has to say. The Founding Fathers, I love them. I do. I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything they did to make this great country of ours. That's why I keep a picture of them behind my desk. These guys, not these guys. <laughs> Although these guys are pretty cool too, aren't they? I mean, come on. Dogs playing poker. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I don't think those dogs were there by choice, though. So I wonder what the angry black male has to say about this. Can I help you? <laughs> Look at what? Racist buildings. Like a building racist? <laughs> like when you ring the doorbell and it gives you a racial epitaph? <laughs> or every time a black mailman comes it's over the mailbox lean back. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of cool that we live in a country that you can make <laughs> like this up and say whatever you want and speak whatever you want and be given the platform to call anybody and their mama racist or even a building. I mean, that's pretty much says that uh, you live in a free country that will let you say anything, no matter how stupid. <laughs> Systematic opportunity. <laughs> And speaking of, at least we have a new American hero, Gwen Berry, America's hammer thrower, which was my dad's nickname when he drank. <laughs> she turned away from the American flag as she stood on the medal podium at the Olympic trials during the national anthem on Saturday. She says she was pissed the song was played as she received the bronze, claiming the timing of the song was intentional. Too bad there isn't a medal for paranoia. But imagine being caught off guard by the Star Spangled Banner at an American Olympic event. <laughs> That's like being stunned when you hear the safety dance at a Men Without Hats concert. <laughs> so there you go. You got a person who, like uh, the National Ar Archives Task Force on Racism, takes things that are inherently positive for a country and recasts them as something deeply offensive. To Gwen, the song is an attack on her, the same way the rotunda is an attack on people of color. I'd say this is nuts, but that would be an attack on cisgender men. I mean, we're a week from July 4th, our nation's birthday. Why do we even bother celebrating it anyway? Of course, besides mixing alcoholic drinks with explosives. <laughs> but if a building can be racist and a song can be racist, can't a date be racist too? Imagine some old guy heading to the rotunda on the 4th and decides to sing the national anthem. God forbid he might be a veteran of some big war. How soon before we turn our backs on him? Good. She's uncovered more plots than a gravedigger. Director and producer of the documentary The Plot Against the President, Amanda Milia. His first job was at Burger King. Now he calls out the Democrats' whoppers. Former Oklahoma State Representative T.W. Shannon. She wouldn't hurt a fly. She's too busy torturing her husband. Fox News contributor Kat Tim. And Jaws saw him and asked for a bigger boat. My massive sidekick and host of Nuff Set on Fox Nation, Tyrus. <laughs> so Tyrus, it would be kind of fun to actually see a racist building like that would actually act like what, how you expressed it. Yeah, that would be real fun, depending on <laughs> who the racist building was mad at. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you duck and keep opening the counter, you know, yeah. the bathroom, leave it, what? Yeah. Like, you know, it would just be like nonstop, just, Turn the TV on, and it's always on a cross burning. Who's saving this? Like, <laughs> yeah, but they're not, because they're inanimate objects, so yes. <laughs> it's not really, really real. But it sounds good, though. I mean, because that's the, the whole point of, 
You can say anything, and especially now. It's never been a better time in this country to be uninformed and just catch a headline on Facebook and then get in front of the camera and just just go to town because even if you're wrong, no one's going to tell you because it comes from your truth. Yes, exactly. Which, good luck finding the roots on that one. But <laughs> what bothered me so much about and here's the deal. Uh, I, I get in this. There's a you can have two thoughts. I just like right. to say you have two thoughts in your head, especially when you're dealing with citizen athletes and citizenship. Right. Uh, I think you can take causes. We've seen historically. We've, everyone remembers this. Yeah. Everyone remembers what Muhammad the sacrifice Muhammad Ali did because he didn't believe in the war. There was consequences, but history looks back on it now going, they're the heroes. Right. Nowadays, we can say anything without a face to it or, or like, I'm against systemic racism. Okay, well, what is that? It's systemic racism. Mm -hmm. And if you can't see it, you're racist. Right. So you can't argue with that. Yeah. And by turning your back, and this was my issue with her, by turning her back on the flight, when you turn your back on something, that means there's no hope. There's done. Like every every mob move we've ever seen, I got to turn my back on you now, Jimmy. You know, yes. it's over. Like, it's over. You can't fix that. So that was what my issue was. I didn't have issues with guys taking knees during the flag because they're standing for what they believe in, the fallen, whatever. You can still love the military and protest what's going on in our government. But that, to me, what she was doing was simply saying there's, there's nothing can be done. It's a horrible place. But she doesn't have – what's your cause? Yeah. That's the problem. There's no face to it. Martin Luther King won. Martin Luther King won. Mm -hmm. You know, President Barack Obama won. Tim Scott won. I'm sitting in this chair. I won. We won. We're seeing everywhere you go what this country is about. And to be in such a safe place to where you can pull stunts like this, she wasn't dragged off the yeah. arena and beaten within an inch of her life. She wasn't having to fire arrows. She doesn't even lost her spot. Yeah. That's So you can say whatever you want in this country because that's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. We're... Words matter, but they don't really matter because you're in a safe place. No one's coming for her. Yeah. So congratulations on taking away from the two uh, people that's, in front of you. That's the thing, uh, TW. I felt bad for the other two. And, uh, and I just found out because I didn't watch any of this. I only got the news off Facebook because <laughs> I was drunk all weekend. Let's be honest. TW, there were two other winners in the, the, the gold, like, or the, the, the one. She broke a world record. Yeah. So that, that was the thing that got me. She came in third place. That's yeah. the first thing. I mean, for, if you're going to make a protest, at least, you know, have the gall to, to win. But, you know, I think every American should stand for the United States uh, national anthem. I mean, it is a rallying call for who we are as a people. This country has done more to make dreams come true than any country in the world. And I don't know who she turned her back on, whether it's America, the national anthem, but I'd like to ask who is she turning her face to? What country is she going to look toward where she's going to be treated better than she is here in the United States of America? That's the problem that I have with this woman. But again, you know, she's probably angling for her next deal. I mean, this is what, you know, Marxists for hire do, right? They, they look for an opportunity to continue to spread this propaganda about how racist America is, when, as been mentioned, America is a place of systemic, systemic opportunity. She'll probably go on to join the ranks of people like Michelle Obama, Oprah Winfrey, and uh, Meghan Markle, who all claim to be oppressed in this country, but happen to be millionaires or billionaires. So that's probably the future she's looking at. But unfortunately, she did it at a place and a time where really she brought, you know, really shame on this country. We should all stand for the United States national anthem. Uh, that's just period, and I don't care who you are. Yeah. You know, Amanda, I just, I thought it was neat to think that the song was about you. Like, sometimes <laughs> that happens to me when I'll be in the gym, and, I, and, uh, and I'll just start, you know, having thoughts. Like, you how probably do they... think this song is about you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm so vain. That moment. Yes. So vain. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's totally insane, because, I mean, I don't watch a lot of Olympics. I know nothing about, like, great athletes and, and all of that. The one thing I do know about the Olympics is that when there's the people standing on the blocks, at any moment, they're going to play the national anthem. Yes. Like, that's the point. I'm like, oh, this is when the flags go and they play the national anthem. Like, how does she not know that? Yeah. How does she, how was she surprised? I mean, I guess it was, like, all about the timing or whatever she said, but um, the idea that she thinks that they did it on purpose to mess with her head mm -hmm. is um, a level of paranoia that I haven't even gotten to yet. I mean, as a, as a Olympic athlete myself... I was deeply offended by all of this. Uh, I got a passion for hammer throwing. So. You, do you? Do you have a passion for hammer throwing? No. You've had a bunch of hammers thrown at you, I'm sure. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I should Ow. be upset. Probably at a hardware you. store. You'd wander in a hardware store, and drunk people... off your ass, cat. Oh, that's Look, yes. right. I yes. meant to tell you, though, I think it's really great that you've gotten into horseback riding. <laughs> because I mean? saw the riding crop in your office. That must be what it's for, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. It is. It is.
I like I love right. I do it. So a hammer throwing, it, it is a, it is a great sport. It is a tremendous art to do so. Mm -hmm. But I think the real issue was, and Cat, I'm surprised you didn't jump on this. Was she was upset because of the timing? Yeah. As soon as she heard, she's been running her mouth. You know, she's been telling everyone what she's gonna do. Yes. And then they played the song, so she had, she wasn't ready. Right. Yeah. She was waiting for the Olympics to do it because you can't stand for this one and then go in the Olympics and do it there. Ah. So somebody ruined it, and that, you are a stickler for timing, Cat. Quickly about the the buildings, I do want to say they also recommended trigger warnings, mm -hmm. which I don't know why we're still doing that because years ago, multiple Harvard studies showed best case scenario they do no good, but they could also potentially create more harm, particularly for trauma survivors. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that this task force didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like mo it's multiple pieces of research from Harvard showing this, and they're like, oh, yeah, trigger warnings. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.